Thank you, and uh, thank you for inviting me to be on this panel, which uh, caused me to stop and reflect and to really come to appreciate in a way I hadn't before how much uh, I owe uh, the Yale Graduate School. Um, I want to dedicate my remarks to two people, uh, Kingman Brewster, for whom I served as Chief of Staff, uh, and my dissertation advisor, John Morton Blum, who died uh, a couple uh, weeks ago, and we had his service here in Battelle just, uh, just a week ago tomorrow. What I'm about to say reflects what I learned from them both in and beyond the classroom. I majored in history here as an undergraduate, um, so I was doubly blessed, studied twice with the likes of Ed Morgan, Howard Lamar, Van Woodward, Gaddis Smith, John Blum, in what was, uh, I think, still the golden age of American history uh, at Yale. And since I've been privileged to lead the new school as it reconnected to its European roots by helping dissident scholars in East and Central Europe in the 1980s, then to chair Human Rights Watch as it expanded uh, to Africa and Asia, to be president of the MacArthur uh, Foundation, which works on community development and education in the U.S. and globally on conservation, population, human rights, peace and security in 60 countries, I'm happy to say, with an office in Mexico. Um, and I have no doubt that my apprenticeship with Kingman and my historical training at the graduate school were key ingredients to whatever good I've been able to do in any of those leadership uh, opportunities. So let me cite um, seven uh, lessons and learnings. The first is that leadership can be dominated by problems and can be reactive. But history tells me, and Kingman's uh, example reaffirms, that moments of crisis can be turned to good purpose. And so I've always looked for uh, the opportunity in a problem, uh, not been put on the defensive and consumed by the negative, um, and put my energy into, as the song says, uh, accentuating the positive. Number two, John Blum used to say, and I can hear it now, nothing is inevitable. People can make or shape the course and turn the tide of history. And that advice was never more useful than in Prague 1989 when I just by accident happened to be sitting at the key moment with the leaders of the Velvet Revolution when they were trying to decide whether this was the moment, whether to press ahead uh, and pursue this uh, revolution. If they had it wrong, they'd be in jail. And if they didn't press ahead and it was the moment, they would forever be regretful. Third, my approach to any situation, whether unrest on campus, and I had lots of that to deal with here at Yale, ethnic strife in Africa or struggles to con uh, conserve land rich in biodiversity, my approach is to understand the historical context and how different issues intersect. And as Gaddis Smith taught me, I try to appreciate the life experience of the people in conflict or who must make common cause to achieve a desired outcome. So my first step in any uh, situation is an historical analysis, trying to understand uh, who's there, what their uh, history is, how they see the, uh, what lens they see the problem through. Number four is uh, timing matters. And I'll never forget stopping uh, on a walk with Kingman across uh, the quadrangle there by the flagpole and uh, at a really tough time during May Day. And he said, you know, um, uh, when you run an institution, you have to know when to uh, be decisive or appear decisive <laughs> on occasion to be indecisive or appear indecisive. <laughs> um, and so we all know there are opportunities missed because the moment passed, uh, didn't act when we should have, or uh, failure was suffered because the moment for action wasn't right. So knowing where you are um, in the arc of history has been important to me in deciding where to invest time and effort. And that's never been more critical than my human rights work, where the problems around the world are so vast, the resources to confront those problems uh, so inadequate, 
And so you have to pick your moments. You have to know, get, get the timing right. Number five, and uh, here I think of Howard Lamar. History helps us understand that problems are not solved or opportunities seized in the short run. Patience is important, as is the capacity to peer over the horizon and project forward from historical trends. And progress uh, is ordinarily made in increments, provided uh, there, are, there are purposeful steps that are understood and placed in a context, an historical context. So progress is really a net proposition, rarely a steady linear march. But hope, determination, and motivation to sacrifice and risk depend on some visible reinforcements. And so when I was at MacArthur, I understood if you wanted to advance uh, human rights in Russia, probably not going to confront the Kremlin head on, but you could take on an issue like police reform, uh, the aspect of government ordinary people see every day, the police, and, and try to get that right. Uh, or in China, uh, very hard to work, uh, but we were able to start a system of public defenders working in the rural countryside. Or in Cuba, not an easy place to work, but there uh, an authoritarian government persuaded uh, that conservation was its in, in best interest um, moved ahead in, in a very good way. Number six, getting close to the end, I think it was Van Woodward who helped me understand um, how to seek common ground, how to search for compromise without sacrificing core principles, and also to be careful about strident ideology invoked with too much passion that narrows the space for reasonable people to differ, but to go on, persevere, and search. And finally, from Ed Morgan, I've always believed that ideas matter. You can be cynical, but I'm not. I do believe that ideas uh, influence policy. Values and principles grounded in rigorous thinking and expressed in charter documents can make a difference over time. And the international human rights movement, um, fortified by treaties and covenants, most no noticeably the Universal Declaration, is a good example of how ideas can gradually change behavior. And that's happened really since 78, uh, most dramatically. So in conclusion, I never had a second thought about pursuing history rather than law, which had been my uh, alternative. Uh, but when I came to the Yale Graduate School in my, in my 30s, I understood uh, I was never going to be a great scholar, even though I love teaching. Uh, but I believe that a deep immersion in history was the best preparation I could have for a life of public service. And so I'm grateful that I did my study here at a university and a graduate school, which honors and encourages giving back to society. Thank you.